enough for me. Okay, there we go. You hear me good? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the Fort Niners legend, linebacker, Willie Harper, man. How's it going? You know? <laughs> all is well. It's all looking good. Yeah, man. So you – you went to Nebraska out of all colleges, and you won the national championship not once but twice. Yes, sir. Back to back. So what led you to go to Nebraska at first? Oh, man, that's a story, man. I don't know we have time for that. <laughs> that little story would be okay. Well, you know, let me see if I can make it short for you. You know, I, I, in high school, I wanted to be a basketball player. I didn't want to play football, and, and um, I kind of backed into football. Uh, I didn't play football to my junior year in high school. And I only played because my friends enticed me and, you know, talked me out on the field. And then, you know, when I got out there, you know, it wasn't too bad. And, uh, you know, I played football. I knew what it was all about. But my, my heart was set on basketball. And uh, so I played uh, football my junior, my, my junior year. I made all city, man. I said, oh, wow, man, it thought that much of me. You know, and so forth. And so I came back next year, had a pretty decent year. And uh, my senior year, Bill Thornton, who was an uh, old Toledo guy uh, from Toledo, played with the St. Louis Cardinals, was my uh, coach my senior year. And so long story short, uh, I had uh, a few um, people interested in me coming. Um, and uh, I had a, a scholarship to Kent State and a couple others, but uh, I had agreed to go to Kent State. But um, uh, Thornton, uh, Coach Thornton came to my uh, class one day and said, I want you to go to uh, to uh, Nebraska with me on this weekend. He, he was going over there, and I said, okay. And uh, I went over there, and when I came back, um, had another visit from Kent State, and the guy did something that uh, kind of blew my mind. I, I held my composure. And I said, well, if this, guy, this cat's going to do this in my house, he won't have no respect for me when I get there. So it was narrowed down to either the University of Toledo or either uh, Nebraska. And so um, ended up going to Nebraska because Bill Thornton said, I'm taking you with me. And I wasn't going to say no, I didn't want to go. <laughs> That's how I got to the University of Nebraska. Yeah, it had to be a very good program coming from the 70s. Like you played on two-time national championship, but – when did you knew you were going to be able to play in the NFL? Well, you know what? Um, um, it was always, you know, our heart's desire to play in the NFL. In the, in the NFL, we had an opportunity to play. Um, but that wasn't my focus. My focus was just being the best that I could be on the field and everything else would, would happen for us. And so when it came time for uh, us to be drafted as players, they came around. And they said, well, Willie, you know, you, you're an outside, you'll be an outside back in the NFL. You're kind of small to be, you know, a linebacker. And so uh, these clubs are interested in you. You probably go third, fourth, or fifth round. And so that's what I was expecting. I just happened to walk in my room one day, had a, a call in between classes. I don't usually answer the phone. But on that particular day, I answered the phone. And so I, I went. You know, because back in that day, we didn't have phones in our rooms <laughs> and nor um, cell phones. So I went to, to the phone in the hallway and I picked up the phone and he said, this is, is, I said, hello. He said, is this Willie Harper? I said, yes, it is. He said, uh, how does it feel to be a 49er? I said, this is the first I heard of it. I said, man, that's fantastic. He said, the 49ers drafted you uh, in the second round. I said, whoa. <laughs> I did, really. That was Added. that was surprising. So the 49ers took a chance on me at being uh their 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 uh uh linebacker and you know I never looked back. Yeah, and today's NFL, they have linebackers just like your size, but they're more effective in coverage, man. I think you were like ahead of your time, don't you think? Well, uh, well, yeah. No, not to be patting myself on the back or uh, anything. I was a big defensive back. OK, I, I really was because I was preparing myself to play safety in the NFL because they said I was too small for a linebacker. And so all my technique and everything that I utilized as a linebacker it was everything that I tried to prepare myself for, for uh, uh, to be an NFL defensive back. And so 
uh, when it came time for coverage, especially man to man coverage, um, I, I mean, you know, I mean, in 13 years, uh, I've, I've had probably five balls caught on me in coverage. Nobody, they didn't throw. I, I, and, and, and I did my homework. So I know what my options were or what their options were in the patterns that they're going to run. I took them totally out. Yeah. Those were like those eras where, you know, hybrid linebackers are pretty much a premium in today's NFL, but like you played in a very interesting era where you play with the likes of John Brody and you play with Cedric Carmen and those other defensive linemen. What is it? Tommy Hart was another guy that was a force. Tommy Hart. Yeah. Uh, 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 Dave, Wilcox. Uh, Dave Wilcox. Now Dave Wilcox was the beast. He, he really was. I, you know, and I say this, you know, uh, with a lot of respect, of course, Dave Wilcox couldn't outrun a park bus, but you know, you couldn't get outside of him. And he was big. He was about six, three and a half or so, uh, 240 pounds, you know, no speed, not a whole lot of quickness, but just brute strength. And I saw how he handled tight ends and threw them around and everything. And I, was, I wasn't that big, 215 pounds, you know. And so I had to figure it out real quick. And so uh, uh, my tech, I mean, what, what, well, when I got to Nebraska, I was virtually technically sound. Uh, but they didn't teach a lot of that, you know, once you got to the pros. Either you knew or you didn't know. And that's what makes me so, uh, um, oh, I don't know. Uh, I won't say angry, but, you know, it's the craft today is not the same as it was when I played. Matter of fact, there's very few teams that play our style of linebacker that I played in my era. I was talking to one of my old teammates about, you know, the the, the linebackers today. And they call them hybrids, and, you know, and then they call them linebackers before they call them hybrids. And uh, uh, they just don't play the kind of a few teams still do it, especially in the east, uh, on the eastern in the eastern uh, uh, part of the NFL. Uh, but uh, the best linebacker, in my opinion, of all time, and, and I've, I've, I've checked him out, I've studied him and I've watched him clearly. Um, and I forgot his name just that quickly. Uh, uh, play for the Buffalo Bills. What's his name? Outside linebacker. Outside linebacker. Are you talking about Von Miller? Von Miller. Von Miller. Von Miller uh, uh, is the best outside linebacker, in my opinion, ever to play the game. He's 250 pounds, uh, 245, 50 pounds. He can cover any back out of the backfield. He can cover any tight end in the league. And he can rush the quarterback, quote unquote, just as good, if not better, than Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor was one of the first, you know, beasts coming on the outside. Lawrence Taylor wasn't a linebacker; he was one of the later uh, hybrid uh, 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 linebackers, a hybrid defensive end coming off the edge. When it came to running, uh, when it came to covering backs out of the backfield, he couldn't do that. Uh, when it came you know, the covering tight ends, he couldn't do that. Lawrence Taylor is probably one of the best, uh, you know, top five. Uh, pad. Well, I don't know. you got so many today to give him a run for his money. But he's, he, he's during his time, he's possibly the best on the field uh, at rushing the quarterback. And so yeah. we got to give him his props there as a linebacker. But a full coverage linebacker, uh, a full uh, 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 a servicing linebacker, one that can cover the pass, one that can uh, uh, coming uh, the backside of the backfield, cover the tight ends, and 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 contain the run. These guys, what they call linebackers today, man, they can't hold. They oh man, come on now. The, the edge is is the weakest aspect of their running. I mean, you know, uh, come on now. These cats, they're great at rushing the quarterback, but they can't cover anybody and they can't hold the edge. You know, that's frustrating for me. <laughs> oh man, and it just comes from a guy who's played it for for a long time. And, and, oh, and absolutely! See, like these guys get cut down, pushed back, logged. We didn't do that in my day. Even our linebackers, you know, you know. So uh, I look at the game from a different perspective now, and uh, you know, uh, my uh, uh, era is 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 done and gone. Man. I believe that we're going to a pass uh, a heavy offense, a game for scoring. And uh, it's, I think we're getting away from so much, you know, black and blue league when I came up in there, you know, uh, uh, getting away. It's all, it's all finesse now. And, yeah. and, you know, I'm a 49er to the bone. 
And I love, I love uh, the uh, oh God, I can't call his name on the outside coming from the outside. What's his name? What the one currently on our team? Yes. Oh, the guy on our outside. Uh, yes. There's this guy named Dre Greenlaw who actually plays like the, but he's like an undersized linebacker. But you have Fred uh-huh. Warner. Fred Warner's another guy. Yeah. I think, I think is, a, I'm talking about the outside. One is okay inside. I like him. You know, he get the job done for him. But you know, in, in crucial times, man, I they just they just drive me nuts. Oh, so you're talking about the outside linebacker? I'm, I'm thinking talking about the outside. Yeah, the guy from Ohio State, I believe. Oh, both side. Nick Bosa, Bosa, yeah, Bosa, bad, he bad boy. We got to give him that. Yeah, he's got he's the better boy. He's tough, but he don't hold the edge. He don't. He's just more of a natural defensive end. At he's that a position. natural defensive end. He's not a linebacker. You know, give me that body. <laughs> he don't <put laughs> yeah, give me that body. body. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but if you look at those eras, you know, like. Um, I mean, you guys were playing a physical style where the refs didn't call a lot of penalties on those. Oh yeah, of- yeah, we were physical now. Well, that we were, we were very physical. You know, you know, I played during the era of the purple people eaters. Uh, oh yeah, those are, those are <laughs> tough. The steel curtain. Then you had the fearsome foursomes. Were another the era. For- yeah, I, you know, I played with folks like that. You know, you get you slap a guy upside the head today. You know, they they throw like the base the basketball players a flagrant one or two. You have to decide whether or not we're going to throw you off the field. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you know, it's kind of like just like you, you, you go from a different time where the Niners didn't win the Super Bowl, but you played from the John Brody era. To yeah, John Montana. What was mm-hmm. the difference when you went from John Brody for your rookie year? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what was John Brody like? What, what was he like? As oh, a great guy, man. I mean, great guy. You know, when you, when especially, you know, becoming in the league, being a rookie, you know, there's a, a, a lot of things that you kind of see and, 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 you know, you try to stay in your lane and especially being a young buck, you know, and uh, you, 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 you're just trying to take orders and, uh, you know, trying to blend in. And, but, you know, uh, uh, Brody was a great guy. He was approachable. Wasn't stuck up, you know, and he didn't think that, you know, he was uh, 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 all world and all this and everything uh, down to earth. Speak with you. Some of those guys, Tommy Hardcore set Cedric was there. And, and of course, we were doing some of the same area. I came in 73. He came in 71. And so, um, you know, no, 73. I know 70. Cedric came in in 70. I believe it was. Yeah, and, and then those guys. And then when I got there, Lynn Rorty had been there already 15 years. Jimmy Johnson had already been there 16, 17 years, you know. And, and then uh, 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 Brody had already been there, what, 14, 15, 16 years himself, you know. And 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 Fred Willard was there, the line, linebacker. I said, what's this cat doing on the field, man, you know. And I didn't realize it until we put on the pads, you know. And they, okay, All right, he's old, he's no dude, but. You know, he can handle his business. That's why he's still in the league. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, Fred, yeah. Dean was, Fred Dean was kind of like, I guess they say he wasn't quite built, but he just knew how to play. Fred Dean Fred Dean is one of the best defensive ends ever to play the game. Fred Dean wasn't much bigger than I was, 230 pounds, you know, 6'3", 230 pounds. But he had, a, he had a wingspan of somebody that was almost seven feet tall. <clears throat> yeah, like and, like. Yeah, and Fred Dean played from the inside out as opposed to what these guys are doing, playing from the outside in. Fred Dean can handle a guy with, you know, from within here and then using great leverage. These guys here, the first thing they do, they're doing like this, and they lose their 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 their, their advantage, you know, uh, and, and, and it's, it, it makes the game tougher. You got you to gotta play the game from inside out. I'm, at Boza, I look at him and see that's how – how great as he is. You see, when he utilized, uh, the, especially for a run, inside technique, you know, handling the, the tackles and turning them this way and that way and able to, you know, uh, uh, clog things up. Every once in a while, he's not consistent with it. It's almost like when he wants to do it, he can do it. And other, other than that, you know, he's just out on the field, ways to die. But other than that, that's just me. Yeah, like the techniques are different. Like the consistency, like you said, it's not the same. Like the way you guys played it all, but uh, no, 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 no. I, you know, and and I'll say this: I'm not going to call the guy's name, but 
one of the 49ers I met him when he was a kid in the eighth grade going into the ninth grade. And uh, he's he, he was number one draft choice. You got to give him that. Great, great athlete. He got great ability. He got great technique. But I told him, I shared with him at that time, what uh, what he need and should do, and some of the things that he could work on if he's gonna if because he was a big kid, you know, and no no doubt that uh, I did, I had never seen him play, and I just wanted to show him a couple of things, you know. He said, "Oh no, I don't need to do that," <laughs> you know. And I said, "What? Okay." You know, I said, well, he was number one draft choice. And so you can't argue about that. Uh, a great athlete. And still, he's a great athlete. But I see some little things that I don't think they just, you know, technically wise, they're not teaching. I don't know. It just don't look like it. I'm just going on what I see. But uh, uh, he's he's almost like Boza. It's almost like when he gets down to, you know, uh, to business and he got to do this and have to do that. I mean, he comes off the ball good. He's low good inside hand moving. He's able uh, uh, to do a bull rush. He is able to get a hand over and everything. I said, man, how come these guys are just not more consistent with what they're doing? They have a great defense. I think the 49ers could be, you know, top three defenses in the, in the entire NFL. That's just what I believe from what I see. Well, I mean, the talent's there. I mean, we've got a lot of guys. No about the, it. Yes. Like, even the backups, some of the backups could step in and play pretty well. So, like. Oh, yeah. I mean, like you go from like you played in a very good era of defense where you guys were able to just to have those hits and no fines, none of that stuff. You guys played yeah. it finally, and they just it was changed, <laughs> yeah, they changed the rules. They changed the rules based yeah. by certain players. But in this era, I mean, you go from guys like Dave Wilcox to Dan Buns, who was the tackling, which I had him on oh, my show. Oh, Dan Buns, man! Oh my God, Dan Buns was a beast. He I really was. Dan Buns was a beast. You know, yeah. he, he, we had Jack Reynolds, but Dan Danny Buns was just physically. He was just, crazy uh, in the field. That's what he told me. Oh, yeah, man. He was a beast. He was big, strong, tall, fast, too. And fast. he had that blonde style hair. He had that blonde yeah, style I, hair. I, man. I, that I, dude was always giving me, he yeah. gave me some funny stories of what made him so Is tough. that right? Uh, yeah, he, we call, call it California streaming, you know. Yeah, <laughs> California streaming. But uh, oh, Mike Schumann was another guy that told me a lot of good things about you. He wanted to say hello to you from the time. I said, "Here, how's Mike doing?" Oh, he's doing well. He was on my show like months ago, and then when he saw that I was going to interview, he just wanted to uh, tell you that he said hello to you, man. Oh, okay. Where's he at? He's still in the Bay Area. I believe so. Okay, thought might he might have went on back to Florida somewhere, you know. But you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, he was a nice guy, and then uh, great guy. Yeah, and then Ricky Ellison was another good guy I had on, too. Great, guy. Great athlete. Oh, Ricky. Randy. You'll like Randy, man. I know you probably know Randy Cross pretty well. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Yes, but, absolutely. But what was it like playing with Joe Montana? Like, Well, you know, uh, his old story, I tell Joe. Um, Joe, uh, was it? Was it? When did Joe get there? 79? 79. 79, yeah. And Joe and I was walking uh, back after practice, it was a cut day. And Joe and I was talking and he was concerned. He was afraid of you. You know, you can talk to him, tell him how, co tell how confident he was. But he just, you know, it's a game of numbers. And he knew that. He, just being a third round draft choice, okay? A third round draft choice. And it was down to the last cut. And he was just concerned about it. Man, I said, man, man who, who here better than you? <laughs> You know, even at that time, uh, and I said, man, man, we, I think Steve DeBerg was the quarterback. Steve, a great quarterback, played for a long time, what, 16, 17 years. But D D Joe had touch, man. Joe had touch. He had confidence. You know, I mean, you could just feel his, 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 his ability to take charge, even in his rookie year, you know. And we can understand young guys coming in the league and, and you know, they, they, Joe has never been cocky or, you know, one of those kind of players, always approachable, always a nice uh, a character of, of, of conversation. You know, Joe was just a great guy, man, just a great guy. But, you know, and he, he, he ended up being the greatest quarterback in, in 49 history. <laughs> or none. I mean, he he won four Super Bowls. He led the team in drives. I mean, there was like the yes. moment where, where it wasn't too big for him. So it was like, 
I'll still take Joe with all the quarterbacks today. I'll still take Joe. So you would take him over Tom Brady? Tom Brady? Well, uh, yeah. I, I mean, because Joe was Joe always got the job done. And 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 here's now here's the difference between Joe and Brady in my you know from my perspective. Joe. Um, Joe never gave. Very, I don't. I, I don't. You know, I can't even remember Joe throwing interceptions in a, a crucial time. I'm not saying that he didn't. I mean, most all quarterbacks have, but I just can't remember Joe throwing an a interception or even fumbling a ball at a crucial moment. Yeah, in the Super Bowl, eleven touchdowns, zero interceptions. Is that for all the Super Bowls he played? Mm-hmm. In? Yeah, oh, all so the you Super understand why well, I can't even remember when he would have thrown a touch. I mean, a, an interception. Part Joe, because he was more chill. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, icebox Joe. Uh, Joe Cool, collectively, like Joe he found cool. ways. Absolutely, in. the John Absolutely. Candy story. The John Candy story was the funniest one I heard. <laughs> but um, speaking of speaking of the first Super Bowl win, so I guess shout out to my boy Moses. Willie, what was it like playing in the Super Bowl and the goal line stand, if you can recall? Oh, man, you know what? You couldn't have told me I wasn't on the field in that goal line stands. I wasn't on the field. But after all these years, man, I thought I was on the field and the goal line stands. Uh, you know, here I am, 215 pounds on the goal line. And, 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 and 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 never got driven off the ball on goal line. Never got hooked. Never got caved in. I just knew I was on the field, and I don't know why I wasn't on the field. But in that particular uh, um, um, arrangement during the course of of, of the week in prep in, in in preparation, we made some changes, and 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 to this day. I don't even remember what those changes were or why I wasn't on the field uh, during that goal line stance. But um, uh, yeah, I remember the goal lines and Danny Bunts hitting uh, uh, Alexander at the one inch line, one inch line, denying that score, man. Come on now. Can you remember anybody like that uh, with a hit uh, in any Super Bowl that you can remember? I, I can't even think of a play like that because it started with Dan Buns and then Dan Buns gave me that recall that play where when he made that tackle his helmet mm-hmm. fell off and he was bust like he had a little dizziness <laughs> on that play but he, he said right that in the face <laughs> yeah yeah he and he, and he, right he, in the face yeah and then when he found out that they won the game he just was dizzy man like he was yeah, dizzy yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and and he just said oh, that's when I knew we won <laughs> like when they were uh-huh. just well, scoring or something know, like back that. In the day, yeah, back in the day, we had we had those little uh, ammonia, uh, uh, you know, those little caps of ammonia. They pop them. And then, you, you know, you say, oh, right, are you okay? So, Ooh, yeah, I'm all right, all right. Okay, you ready to go back in? You're out of your mind, out of your head, and you're going yeah. back in. <laughs> yeah, it was. But um, so what was the difference when you started playing with Bill Wash, and, and what do you think of Kyle Shanahan? If he if he wants to reach that standard of what Bill Walsh established, well, I mean, you know, they're different coaches, and 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 they have a, a, a proven and uh, you know a, a successful approach to being a winner. I like Shanahan. Uh, you know, I, I like uh, what I've seen uh, over the years uh, since he's been there, and uh, and Bill Walsh. Uh, well, that's not a great. I don't see a great deal. Bill, Bill. Um, at least because I was there and I, I didn't, I don't, uh, perceive or, uh, uh, have seen Shanahan like I seen Bill Walsh, you know, Bill Walsh would stop everything on the field and, and, uh, let you know who's in charge and we're going to do it this way until we get it done, you know, um, and, and, and Bill knew how exactly he wanted it it to be carried out. He would know what he wanted to accomplish. And I see the same thing in Shanahan. But I just don't see Shanahan being upset with everybody because things are not going right. And, and you know, and uh, uh, knock all the 
uh, plates off the table, pictures off the wall, kick the chairs over, you know, because he's so angry and upset because things are not, um, you know, looking the way he expects them to look. The plays are not being run properly. Uh, but I, and Bill did that. <laughs> Bill had a different approach, and sometimes Bill, yeah. he did it for the right reasons. Yeah, and yeah, there's absolutely, absolutely. Bill Bill had a a, a Huck Hogan approach. <laughs> you know, yeah, there so, was, yeah, there was quite a few. Uh, I don't know if this was true, but a lot of headbutts between him and and Eddie DeBarlo. I don't know how that kind of just they had an up and down uh, relationship. But what was it like on that incident? Were they kind of like? Disagree well, on something? you know, fortunately enough, I was never around. Oh, you're never around. Yeah, I was never around when, in, in, you know, uh, they had those kind of, uh, uh, you know, interfacing or confrontations. Uh, I was, I was never around. Um, so, uh, but George Seifert, George Seifert just seemed to have everything under control, order, a lot of respect from the players, from the guys on our side of the ball. So, you know, George, uh, 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 no different than any other coach, upset when things don't go right, but just had a different approach to, to get all the guys to buy in uh, to him, his approach, and how we were going to accomplish what we were going to accomplish. And we set out to do it, and we did. Oh, yeah. I mean, Seifert brought a great defense with you guys. I mean, you play with a lot of different defense during your time, but you went from so many, what is it, like a couple head coaches before no, you no, 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 no. I had six head coaches. I had six head coaches in six years. That's and what I heard. No, no. I had six head coaches in five different years. In five, five years. years. And I spent three of those five years with Dick Nolan. Ooh. Yeah, Dick Nolan, because his right. son was the head coach for the Niners during that time, too. And was Dick Nolan really a good defensive coach? Why was he oh, not man, like Dick, Yeah. Dick Nolan was a great guy. He was. Dick, I, I, Dick, 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 Dick got me ready. Dick, unlike a lot of, you know, coaches that I've seen that I've had, you know, especially head coaches, uh, uh, Dick Nolan had a, a you know, mental uh, a, a perspective of everything he wanted to accomplish. And so oftentimes he wanted to make sure that his players were studying. And when I came in as a rookie, I studied, I studied, and I got a um, – um, I got a, a, a printout, a, a computer printout. And I looked at all of this, you know, uh, uh, all, all, all the, I couldn't, man. I said, what is this? I want my post to learn this. And uh, uh, Dick, they they took their, our defensive coordinator, Dick took time, so now he showed us how to read the, um, the com computer printout. Man, I was in that computer, you know. Uh, studying that, I, I come, I come, I learned to understand quickly uh, the character of a team. And, and when you're on uh, this side of, of, of the, the left side or right side of, of the yard markers going down the field, what's going in fourth and fifth? I mean, uh, of, 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 of third, fourth, whatever the down in situation was, and every team had a number of plays that they run in that particular area of the field. And and then when I got a hold of that, you know, it, man, man, it was, I didn't have to, uh, this just all recognition now. And, and I, I didn't have to, you know, after about four, five, my fourth, fifth year, I mean, it was all here. It's all here. I could just look and scream almost like, you know how you do speed reading? <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, like communication that's how, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I could read that computer printout. But you know, when 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 Bill Walsh came in, all of that went out the window. You different know? approach, different in, change. Entirely different approach, you know, George Seifert. And and I didn't, you know, really, and this may sound crazy, but I really didn't have to study. I, I just looked at the film. I just looked, I looked at film and then I, I saw I made notes to myself what they did, you know in certain areas of the field, what side of the field they were on, whether it was strong or weak side, I already knew in my mind what possible patterns are going to, I mean, as far as passing plays are going to be run to my side of the field. You know, running plays, down in distance, you know, strong or weak side. And so, you know, things became quite, uh, um, uh, I won't say easy, nothing's ever easy, especially at that level. But uh, um, I was just more comfortable uh, in 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 uh, processing the game as I played the game. 
Yeah, and in an era like that, you just had it under your head, like mentally, like it just got right on. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Process, yeah. like, but in, in, in today's technology, man, you can just get a keypad and all kinds of stuff. But in those days, you had to get a print and certain stuff. Oh man. yeah, absolutely. It was, it was a lot of time. Time. Yeah, but 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 you know, I was an avid studier. I mean, I did. I studied. I mean, when I wasn't at camp, um, uh, in camp at the at the uh, uh, building there at the training camp. Man, I'd I be studying. I'd be, I'd be looking at my plays. I'd be assessing, you know, my 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 competition constantly, constantly, man. I I I, I was avid at doing that. Yeah, I mean, the, it had to be a habit for you. Like you said, once you got the hang of it, it just was in your head. So everything oh, yeah. started becoming more smooth. Like, But you weren't like saying it. you didn't make it seem like easy in your own mind, but you got the hang of it. So, you know, when oh, you do a job... Yeah. Yeah, when you do a job, it takes time to adjust a certain environment. But once you get the hang of it, mm -hmm. it's nothing. Yeah. But, uh, oh, here's an interesting question. Since you're talking like the era you played in, man, you played with with Ronnie Lott, man. That dude was oh, yeah, like, you know, Ronnie Lott playing with Ronnie Lott. You know, what an adventure, what an opportunity, you know, what a delight to play with such a young man who has such a grasp of the game you know, at such an early stage in his career and see him develop the way he did. You know, he's He's very deserving of all that he's accomplished and all the accolades and everything that comes, you know, along with it. Great guy and a great guy and a great guy. You know, you see a lot of these guys now, man. They, I don't know, man, these cats, as far as, you know, they, you know, <laughs> they're just like a privileged, a privileged uh, kid on the block, you know, but uh, uh, just because. But uh, Ronnie, the, the guys that were back there, Carlton Williamson, Eric and Wright, uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, Thomas, Thomas and Saladin, you know, those guys that were back there, man, man, uh, they were a joy. And and then the captain of the group, uh, Dwight Hicks, uh, just a, just, oh man, come on. Oh, he's a good dude. Oh yeah. We had such a, such a confidence in these guys and they played great ball. They, we didn't have to ever look on our, over our shoulders. At least that's, that's that's what I felt. And didn't have to look over our shoulders to see if anybody was going to be where they were supposed to be. It was kind of that same feeling I had at the University of Nebraska. Uh, we may not have had the best athletes in the in 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 uh, 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 in the conference or you know in the country, but we were disciplined. Monty Kiffin, Monty Kiffin, Monty Kiffin. He had us rocking. He had us rocking. You know, and and uh, he always it was very disciplined. Deep. Hey, come on, man. Hey, now listen to this. Listen to this. We won two back-to-back -back national championships, all right, with defensive backs that probably didn't even run a 4-6. Ooh, and they just were well-coached. Well-coached. Monty Kiffin had us he, – he had us in the position to, you know, to make our assault and to, to take advantage of opportunity. And then, of course, I think we had the best nose guard in the country in college football, Rich Glover. You know, and so we had uh, John Atkins on the outside and one on the other side. John Atkins was probably the fastest guy on defense. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, John Atkins. Really. Yeah, John Atkins was probably the fastest guy and myself. Because uh, John in college, in high school, was a track guy, 6'3", about 200. Big guy, too, 225 pounds, fast, quick, you know. But John, you know, John said after football, um, he's not going to play college. I'm not going to play. He don't want to play professional football. And so, you know, he said, I'm going to um, further in, 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 uh, in my career. And that's Dr. John Atkins now. You know, Ooh. he could have played. He could have played. He could have played if he wanted to. But, I mean, our defense was smothering. And we it, I, we were smothering. And I had that same kind of, 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 of feeling toward that. 1980-81 defense as as uh, 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 Coach Seifert was putting things together. You had you just had that feel to it, you know, just had that feel to it. Yeah, you look back on your career, man. You won two college national championships, and then you win a Super Bowl. So you look back at it, man, that has to be like something that most athletes can just say, hey, I want a college national championship and I want a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that's something you can live up with and say, hey, I, I established everything as an NFL player. So, like, yeah, 
Oh, absolutely. You know, and it's something that, you know, my boys, I have seven boys, you know, and it's something that they're proud of and, and uh, 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 have honored their dad in doing so. And I, I, I like, I appreciate that for even having that kind of a, an opportunity for I mean, someone in my family, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, your son, Josh, established as one of the top oh, yeah. Fresno State receivers besides Devontae Adams. This guy was was putting some consecutive seasons yeah. with 1,000 yards, was Derek Carr's other option. I mean, yeah. then uh, your granddaughter, one of the most successful singers in her own line. I mean, that's got to be great to just <laughs> be, a, be a huge part of it, man. Come on. That's got to be oh, great. Well, I mean, that's good. And we thank God for all of their accomplishments and so forth and so on. And then, you know, don't forget, I have a son right now that's coaching with the 49ers. Oh, yeah. Like coaching. Yeah. It yeah. just He's comes with his... it with success. Well, yeah. The name Harper. Yeah, Matthew, he started out uh, uh, with Philly over there and won a Super Bowl over there. And and now he's he's coaching on the team that his father played for and where he grew up at. I mean, I, it doesn't get better than that as far as I'm concerned, you know. So he's home coaching. He's yeah. home coaching. And, and then, you know, then again, my daughter, my daughter, uh, she is the uh, the CFO over there with the Raiders. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. It's great. It's, and, and, you know, uh, uh, thankful to God that we had that kind of opportunity and that, and, you know, not only that we had the opportunity, but we had the ability to take advantage of it. You know, there's a lot of opportunity around, but when you get your chance, do you, do you walk through the door or do you sit there and ponder? We took off. We took you off. Their mama, yeah. Now their mama won't let them, their mama raised them really good, you know, and, She's a good yeah. mother. Yeah, you got to go right. with it. You, She's you the hammer in the house. The yeah, mama got the hammer in the house. Oh, yeah. You got to go with the opportunity. When it's presented, you got to take it. Like, Oh, yeah. It. Absolutely. Yeah, and I guess that defense that you were a part of, it was a powerhouse. Like, But then playing in Nebraska, like you just said, a lot of these DBs weren't quick, but they were just well coached. You know, well coached. Yeah, no doubt about it. If no you're well coached, you can do it, man. It don't matter. Yeah. Like – uh but I mean, yeah, man. So like, you know, it's kind of nice to just get a chance to interview your son <laughs> earlier. And he tells me about a lot of great stories that you've told him about, but just interviewing a person that I've actually heard about many years. Mm -hmm. And then you were like, what was it like to just interact with Patrick Willis? I've seen you in interactions during. Oh man. On the sideline. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, seen glad you, I'm glad you brought Patrick Willis up. Patrick Willis is the best middle linebacker to ever play for the 49ers. Speed, uh, no, coverage, no, no, wise. That, huh? Speed, coverage wise. Everything. I mean, this guy, the Everything. instincts, he just knocked out. Boom. He the best. He, Patrick Willis is the best by a long shot. And, and, and see you guys, those guys you have there, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Yeah, they really are. Oh, uh, but Patrick Willis, man, when Patrick Willis retired, man, that was like Barry Sanders retiring. Come on. Yeah, that man. was because of the injury. But, yeah, that was yeah. tough. Yeah, absolutely. But then, mm -hmm. then we had this promising linebacker who just had his career cut short just by one year, and this guy was leading the rookies in tackles for the Niners, Chris Borland, man. That guy was was a madman for an undersized linebacker, man. I thought yeah. he was good. Borland, yeah. What happened? He got an injury of a sort? No, it had something to do with his concussion. I think he kind of reconsidered to, re like, to Is that right? Up. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember. I remember Borland. Yeah, I just wondered what happened to him. I didn't know what happened to him. It, he I just like, story. He kind of wanted to sec – like, he second thought his career because of what happened. He had some multiple head injuries. He couldn't remember stuff and stuff like that. And, oh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. And I think he's doing something called concussions where he's doing more, like, researches and all bunch of stuff. So he's kind of – Where's he doing, located? Where's he at now these days? I think somewhere in Ohio. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm an Ohio boy, so, you know. Yeah, Toledo, huh? Must have been a pretty tough yeah. street growing up there, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was pretty interesting. I was, you know, one of those kids that didn't go too far from home, you know. So when I left to go to Nebraska, this was all a grand, a brand new adventure for me, you know. So, um, but it was interesting. Um, I was one of those kids that grew up in that little tight community. Said, once I get out of here, man, I ain't never going back. 
so like uh, like sometimes people just want to get a fresh start and go elsewhere and they yeah but i kind of regret that though i kind of regret that because what i did when i came to san francisco i was doing things in oakland and uh uh, uh yeah in oakland through united way and a few other uh, uh uh nonprofits that i could have and should have been doing at home in my own hometown you know, yeah. But, Sometimes but, you gotta get back to the community, but I guess you yeah. just had, you had a you had a good foundation of what you were doing. So I mean, yeah, well, we all wish we can go back in time and do something about it. Well, know? yeah, 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 yeah. I, I I mean, dude, it's like just interviewing legends after legends. I get to learn about what was it like to play in a different era. Like you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm, you got mm-hmm. to acknowledge you got to acknowledge your past. You got to acknowledge the past. You got to acknowledge the players yeah. that had that that uniform and presented it the right way. And you mm-hmm. played for decades with the Niners. So when you went from the Niners, you played in the, what is it? The USFL. USFL. I played two years in the USFL. Played for Donald Trump. Ooh, yeah. I heard about yeah. that. The yeah, generals. Man. I had the opportunity to meet Donald Trump, have conversation with him. He was a great guy. He was okay. You know, he was, it was okay. I mean, he, he, you know, he wasn't Eddie D <laughs> you know, he wasn't Eddie D, but still he would come and uh, mingle with the guys, with the players on the team. We had a chance to talk to him and, you know, so forth and so on. You know, he wasn't as open and as uh, cordial as Eddie D was, of course. But, uh, you know, there's only one Eddie D. Yeah, one Eddie D where he looked up for his players. and Oh, players. man, come on now, second to none. Yeah, like when Jeff Fuller had his career ended, he made oh, sure that man, he covered you know that something. Career. He just stepped up. He's just stepped up, man. He just stepped up and provided. That's awesome. I, you know, I'm not saying there's none that have haven't done that, but I don't know of any owner in the league that have done that, other mm-hmm. than and then um, 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 Al Davis. Al Davis was a visionary when it came to like oh, the players yeah. that he looked at. Like he mm-hmm. wanted speed. He wanted guys that fit the mold. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Um, there was quite a few dudes that I had a chance to interview, and they had different standards of where they played at. And uh, mm-hmm. I interviewed one Raider player, but he told me when he met Al Davis, he mm-hmm. just felt that the visionary was just something that was old school. But he just had that vision of what made him win championships then. Is that right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this guy used to play for the Raiders, but he played for like throughout his rookie year, and I think he played like four or five years with the team, but he was a safety. But his name was Stuart Swagger. I had him on like months ago, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. good dude. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, you know, it's kind of like just the way you look at the era, man, it's like things have changed. Do you feel like it's just getting softer just by how they're not letting the defense make into place? Well, it's not a point of it getting softer because I tell you what, when those guys hit you, you feel the blow, baby. Let me tell you. And, and these guys are hitting like maniacs. All right. Uh, not many of these guys break down to hit. They're just like a torpedo, man. And, and they're just blasting each other. It takes its toll. It takes its toll. All right. And, yeah, and, it sure does. And and it I mean the body can only take so much. The body can only take so much, you know. And and these guys, they they don't seem to be as uh uh I don't want to say tough, they're tough, but they, it's almost like they're fragile. They get hurt and they I mean every time you turn around, somebody's getting hurt. And they're going to be out. They're going to be sidelined, and you know, for, you know, uh, a couple games. No, nah, they what, man, we, man, we, 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 whatever, we did whatever it was, uh, well, that was needful for us to be able to get on the field. And, and you know what? And, and sometimes I felt with the injury that I had, I had a better game. Had a better game because uh, psychologically I just had to slow down and take the game slower. And so I processed better. And thus had a better outcome, uh, you know. But uh, um, uh, these, I don't know, man. And they're and for me, for me, they're not as technically sound. And they, and 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 then you can the body language is not one of you know uh, a great con- level of confidence. I, that, that's just me. That's just me. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you guys play a different area. You guys think differently. Oh, yeah, yeah, we think differently. You know, these young guys, Ronnie Lott and Eric, and and you know those guys coming in. They these guys played with a great deal of confidence. Yeah, yeah. and you can of, see it. A lot of a lot of the favorable ways they played. They played physical, and oh, they yeah, played. Physical. Oh man, they were physical even in practice. Come on. Yeah, then you had guys yeah. like Keenan Turner who played with confidence on the field too. Yeah, yeah. These guys don't even hit no more. The NFL don't want you to hit during practice. They don't even wear pads in practice no more, do they? No, I think they try to make sure the quarterback doesn't get hit. They have that that stupid red thing, you know, that thing where you can't touch them or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. You know, entirely different thing. I think we're going toward flag football, you know. I, I think the same way, too, because they're, they're just making it too safe for the <laughs> players. Like, you can't even touch the quarterback. You can't even hit him or it's a flag. It's like – Yeah. Can't put your body down if you want to get a sack or else they're calling it a flag. Look how Bosa makes the adjustment. He has to make sure when he gets the quarterback down, kind of like mm -hmm. he's putting him in his pillow and say, hey, here's a pillow, I'm going to get out. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I mean, mean – Yeah, you know – but I mean, but but these referees, I mean, the calls, these referees are terrible. I'll just put that out there. They're, they're terrible. Yeah. They're not consistent. And, you know, it's just it's just the protect the quarterback rule is just outrageous sometimes, you know. It is too favorable for the quarterbacks. And then, like you said, the officials, you know, for those players, they can't even criticize the officials or else they get a fine, which is ridiculous. Oh, like they they yeah. have every right to criticize them. They need to do that in the NBA. That's what they need to do. These guys, these guys cry about everything that happens, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you fell in love with basketball, so that could have been another path. But what made you just really just feel like football was just more of your passion over basketball? Well, I mean, the doors opened up for me in football. And uh, basketball, I had an opportunity to play basketball at the University of Nebraska. Um, I played basketball with our fraternity and all the all of my three years there that we played, we won the all fraternity championships while I was there. And one year, uh, one of the coaches there kind of like pulled my coattail to kind of like, you know, entice me to come out on the floor and see what I can do. I told him, never forget. I said, well, you know, I, I thank you for the opportunity, but I don't like to sit the bench. <laughs> Oh, so I had to be on the bench? Oh, that no, I don't believe I told him, I said, I don't like to sit the bench. I said, because, you know, you guys here, you play a slow down uh, pass, 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 you know, and work it, work it, work it. You know, I don't have a problem with that. But, you know, uh, I, I knew how to, 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 to work. And I knew how to work to get my shot. I knew how to work to get my shot. And that's where my confidence was. And, and I was I could jump pretty good. And so, the, you know, you're going to have to be about six, six up to even contend with me because I would overpower you. And uh, I said, I shoot too much. I shoot too much. Y'all put me on the bench and that would make me mad. So I, I think I'll just stick with what I'm doing here. <laughs> and it just got you a better path. I mean, you won. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. I, I, mean, that, I don't think I would have played professional basketball. You know, I said, no, I know, no doubt about it. But I think I could have had a lot of fun playing college basketball. Pretty sure it would be a lot of fun just to make those shots and go for those oh, yeah. rebounds, steal the ball, whatever. I mean, it's just – there's a lot of fun with basketball. It's just a lot of these players, like, yeah. it's, it's too soft with them getting these flops. Like, they do these flops a lot. All the time, all the time. But, you know, these athletes, they, man, they, they are tremendous. I got to say, they are tremendous athletes. And these guys playing football now as opposed to back in my day, you know, football player, you know, 75, 80 percent of these guys that play football couldn't do nothing with a basketball. But these kids coming out of uh, 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 coming into the league now, you know, you got a very high percentage of these guys that can, you know, really handle that basketball, play a good game of basketball, too, and put it in the, put it in the basket. Yeah, like you have Debo Samuel who can do something like that. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, look at look at. Uh, 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 I, I was amazed at um, who was it now? Uh, the wide receiver um, back in my well, well, I was before him. He played with the Raiders too. Um, Cliff Branch. No, after Cliff Branch. 
Uh, who was who was the wide receiver? The wide receiver was he? Um, was he the guy with he played with Minnesota too? Played with Minnesota. Was, yeah, he's 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 one of the sports casters. Uh, oh, you're talking about Randy Moss? Randy Moss. Oh, that man, dude was Randy just athletically Moss. freak. He was that, a freak. He, yeah, he's an athletic freak. He he is. Uh, oh, Six man. four, two ten, ran a four two speed, and just when, yeah. he, when he caught the ball, and, nobody was going to catch him. Yes. Yes, Randy Moss. And I seen him play basketball too. Unbelievable. You got Moss. That's what he that's what you he got does. Moss, baby. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that dude was exceptionally like a damn good athlete. Like you could just tell he was just built for this, but he was just skinny. Yeah. But he he he's he was just skilled. He was I mean skilled didn't he... in every aspect of, of, of football or basketball, whatever he could choose to play, whatever he wanted to play. Yeah. But if you look at another guy who could be built for football and wrestling, George Kittle just fits the part, don't you think? Oh, yeah, Kittle. I love Kittle, man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Personality-wise, man, that dude just fits the part. Is that right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, like it, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen the WrestleMania event or something, but he made an appearance where he kind of knocked one of those other wrestlers out, like mm -hmm. in the match. Because he got picked on. So he went in there, and I guess Pat McAfee, who was a punter, kind of like competed in a match. Yeah. And he to the referee, uh -huh. and Kittle just knocked uh, the Miz out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty It's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, Kittle just has great personality. I can see why. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. but – uh. I'm pretty sure, man, it's been a pretty interesting story, man. Maybe down the road we'll definitely need to, like, do another interview at some point. Maybe I'll bring oh, up okay. your teammates, man. But, um, you know, I'm looking forward to having more interaction with your son. Maybe we're working on a podcast maybe down the road, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, you but, did, um, Oh, Joshua, Joshua. Yeah, Joshua. Hey, good, great yeah. guy. Yeah, you said you said that a little while ago, Joshua. And I, I, at least I figured now you were referencing Joshua. But I thought you had said you had interviewed Matthew. No, Josh. Okay, because yeah, yeah, Matthew, he's he's a coach there with the Niners, so yeah. I thought um, you were referencing him. Oh no, nah. I mean Josh, Joshua. Yeah, yeah, Josh was Josh. about like almost the same age as me. I'm a little older though. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, um, very good dude. Like, I just feel like the vibe is there, and I feel like that's where he gets the personality from. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he he he's a great guy. Uh, a great character guy, and uh, you know that's my boy. That's yeah, my you raised some, you raised success right there. But uh, definitely, <laughs> hey, I definitely like to get like an autograph out of you because I had a lot of autographs from all of the past players I've interviewed. Man, yeah. I think you like you were the longest tenure of that era. So you play with the likes of John Brody, Joe Montana. You play with Dave Wilcox, and you played in all different eras of these Niners that were like the good and bad years. So, uh -huh. Oh man, come on, two and fourteen back to back, man. Come yeah, on, yeah, those were tough times. And if you're, oh, yeah, if you're a, if you are a true Niners fan, you have to acknowledge your past. You have to acknowledge the history. So yeah. you know, I had to go deeper into who, knowing what you were all about. And I seen that you were like somebody who was there consistently, and you were leading the team in tackles at times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, they didn't keep good records back then. <laughs> I mean the records, but but at least you were the consistent guy. You yeah. were like, but yeah, I guess well, the, yeah. Well, you know, and, and I say that because I mean, when you brought that up, I mean that that put a thought in my mind. Uh, they said they said that uh, you know taking nothing from Charles Haley, Charles Haley, you know, great great athlete, and I think that he's supposed to be the the leader as far as uh, 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 sacks for the 49ers, but it's not Charles Haley. It's Cedric Hartman. Cedric Hartman. I, um, Cedric Hartman had the. I think he had like a, a season where he had like at least almost up to like twenty two or something plus that. Yeah, I, I forget. I don't. I don't recall that. But I, uh, wasn't Tommy Hart up there a little more? Yeah, yeah. It's Cedric and Tommy. Man, I mm -hmm. got to get Tommy Hart on, man. I heard he had the most record for the most sacks mm -hmm. in one game. In one game, that's what yeah. I heard. Yeah, yeah, but that's the guy I have in the backside right there. Your your boy or Cedric Hartman on the back. Uh huh. Yeah, Cedric and and, and uh, Cedric had I think 125, 135 overall sacks in his career. Yeah, and like in those, those like in the statistics, they didn't really mm -hmm. count them. Then. But if you if no. you count the ones that he had those other years, like you do the math. Yeah, yeah, he had yeah, the most he, sacks. Yeah, he he, he had the. 
He's the number one sack guy uh, in 49er history. Yeah. Still to this day. Still to this day, and Still he was the first. Day. He was the first guy that I had my first football autograph. Is that right? Two thousand two. I still have it. It's on the back. He, uh, he, he was a. Uh, it was interesting, you know, when I was going to a Safeway, just like with my dad. We have seen some football players. We have seen him and a and a guy mm-hmm. with the Raiders, and then he was the one with the Niners. And I'm like saying, okay, I guess you have to learn your history, but you have to see who these guys are. And I seen him just <laughs> work like in a different era. He wore the eighty six. Yeah. You know, yeah. 86, that's just rare. And I'm like, did anybody on defense wear that number? Like, you know, I'm trying to learn football, and I'm a young kid. You know, I was like maybe, what is it, like 11 or something or 12? Mm-hmm. Well, I was kind of understanding. I thought defense were the 90s or something, but he wore the 86. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. I mean, you know, you got guys wearing numbers today. You would never think they play the positions that they play, so. Yeah, it was a rare time then, but yeah, dude, like it was definitely fun. But for everybody else, thank you guys for tuning in. But hey, this is the legend Willie Harper, and you guys have, you know, you guys had a great moment for the faithful. You know, the faithful want to thank you, man, because you had a chance to be mm-hmm. a part of the Super Bowl, like the first ever. You know, they won the first Super Bowl, so you were part of that culture turnaround. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I mean. <clears throat> some memories that uh, I'll never forget. And, but, you know, on the other hand, there's so much I have forgotten. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> so yeah. thankful for the opportunity, for the experience over the years. And so I'm, I'm just thankful, just thankful, just yeah, thankful. Just, just thankful for the faithful. We are thankful and we'll see you all in the next episode. But thank All you, right. Faithful. Now, what's your name again?